Hello and welcome to Stream Tabulous. Got a quick one for you today, and that's how to manually color a black and white photo using Kriter. So we're not going to be using the AI today. We're going to be taking a look at layers and the color palettes in Kriter. That's a very pro um, powerful program for free. And we'll go to the intro, and then I'll show you how to do it. And welcome back. So I have our photo uh, open here and we're going to go through and do a couple of things first. So you can come across up to um, settings here and uh, you've got different themes. So I'm just going to change that to this one, which will just help me out a little bit. And then we're just going to go through here and we're going to click on settings. We're going to go to dockers and we want to go down to palette. I'm going to enable palette. And we can click and drag that out if we want to. And then once it's out, we can actually put it over top of our layers until our layers light up like that. We can let go. And that will add it like this. We can move our tabs over. Now we've got layers and we've got palettes. And this is very similar to uh, Paint Shop Pro and Adobe where you can just go through and just select a color. And from there, you can just paint on your image. Now... We can come down to where it says default. So we click on those little icons of what looks like the color palette there. And we click on that and we can come down and we can see there's different availabilities for what we can use. So swatches is a good one. So we can come to this and we can see our gradient color rainbow down here. And that gives us some nice colors that we can use for those skin tones. Not using digital artwork today. So we'll come through here and we can add a layer. So if we come up to the top here, you'll see layers. You just want to click on that and come down to new and come to add a paint layer. This high contrast orange really works well to show you what I'm doing. Now, once you've got your layer here, this is the big key point to professionally coloring a photo is to actually use your your uh, layer options so if you click on where it says normal you'll get all these options now what makes Kriter especially good is you have the option to add other ones and I've talked about easy burn using the um, AI uh, photo color restoration so you can come down and if you don't have certain ones, you click darken, for example, and you get a drop down and you can tick the ones that you want to be in your list. So we're going to come through and we're just going to choose color quickly. I'm going to come back to palette. Now, when we come over and we select our colors, we've got some beautiful ranges here. And when we come over, we can adjust our size up. And then when we color our image, Color is rather orange, but that's okay. I'm going to show you some tricks. Okay. You can see all the details are coming through. We're not hiding any of those. Now, what a lot of people get wrong when they're talking about recoloring is they will use a normal layer and they will just drop the opacity down to try to color the layer. And what you see here is... You can see all that black, the contrast and the details are getting lost. We don't want that. So you can do an easy burn and you can still play with the opacity. But now what you're getting is you're getting those contrasts come through. So you can go to color, same thing. You can still play with the opacity until you'll get a skin tone which looks more realistic. But what you get is you get all these colors bleeding through and you have to forgive me the monitor i'm working on isn't uh, a color accurate one rather expensive don't have the money to um buy that sort of monitor but if you have a color accurate monitor you get an idea of here of how to do it now, if you don't have a color accurate monitor what you can do is very easily we can change these colors we can go here and we can duplicate the layer 
and we can hide this layer here. And now on this layer, we can change it to normal. And then what we can do is we can go to our palette and we can say, okay, I want to try this color here. So we'll go back to layer. We'll make sure that opacity is up. We don't want to change that. Come down to our bucket and we just flood that with the new color. And then we can come up to color again and then we can adjust that. So what you can do is you can save your layers. So you can save this as a uh, Krata document or even a um, Adobe Photoshop document. So you can reopen it up with uh, all your layers in it. And you can also save a copy of the uh, edited image as a JPEG or better yet a PNG file. You can transfer that to something like a mobile phone and you can check the colors on a mobile phone. And that gives you two grades of reference to get an idea and find a balance between actually doing your color. A little bit of extra work, but if you don't have a color accurate monitor and you view it on your phone, you're like, wow, that is oversaturated. You can go back and find the balance in between. And then you should hopefully get a fairly good look across other mediums. Uh, if you have the ability to cast it to a smart TV or view it on a smart TV, you can do that as well. Um, if you've got multiple family members with different phones, you can get them to have a look at it and just send it through on something like Messenger. And that gives you a broad range of screens to get an idea of the colors that you actually have on your image. So now I have a monitor over here, which is running OBS. And I can see these colors are a lot darker than running it through the Samson monitor here. Which one is more accurate? I don't know. Um, the AOC monitor is meant to be a color accurate one, but is not currently adjusted for that. So we can come back to our paints now. And what we can do, we've got our new paint there. So we're going to go straight up with that. We're going to go back to normal. We're going to select our eyedropper tool and we can select our new color. Once we have our new color, we can change that back to color. We can drop opacity down until we're at a happy point with it. We can do our brush and we can come through and we can continue. And you can see there we're getting those, those, we're not covering any details. They're all coming through absolutely perfect. So we're working with layers. The more layers, the better. And we're just taking our time and coloring it in. Now, what is time consuming manually doing it, of course, is, and I'm just doing this roughly, is you need to come through and um, get into those corners and make sure they're good. So you can come down like that. And then, of course, we're going to have to come to our eraser, change the size on that, and come down and just clean up curves as you're doing it. Okay. So it's, it's very time consuming. I love the, uh, the AI ability to uh, actually do this. Um, so we're not going to worry about getting this perfect today. And you can see all that skin grain in the photo is coming through. We're not covering any of that up. You do not want a layer which is normal for its um, layer type. Uh, normal is just going to um, destroy the details in your image and you don't want to do that. And as you can see, because we've got those contrasts on the image, we're not even having to go through and do highlighting colors. So we don't have to go through and um, select different colors and uh, put some reds and stuff in. Uh, and you can still do that if you want. So we can see that. You just come up there. And it's the same with the hair. We can easily create another layer. So new, add a paint layer. We've got our layer here. Now it's on normal. We can go to our palette, which we added. We can select a color, color that across. And then we can come through and we can try and have a look at the different sort of layer patterns here. So, and I'm just on that, it's highlighted. I'm pressing arrow down and I can see all different effects that that has on that layer. You can see multiply looks really good and you could drag that down. You could have a, uh, a brown hair using the uh, yellow tone if you wanted to. So there we go, just like that, come through. 
and I'm only doing it roughly. We're not going to um, finish this photo in full. So I just want to do a quick and easy one and address some of the things that um, people aren't quite doing well. So uh, we've talking about doing a normal layer. You do not want to use a normal layer. We can bring that opacity up. Again, we can come through. We can change that to a normal layer there. We can go to our palette. We can choose a different color. We can now flood that. We can go back to layers. And we can take a look at the different effects on the layer options. Okay. So they're the blending modes. So, you know, try different blends on your layer. Don't use it as a normal. And again, you can come through. We can do a new layer. Come to our palette. And pick a sort of red looking tone. Come back to our layer. We can just... Paint the lips in there. Go for that vibrant color. Okay. So again, we're just doing this rough. We're not going to go through and clean it up that much. And you can go to your different layers, bleed that through. Color would probably work better on the darker one. And then you can adjust your opacity once you've actually done your layer blend. And that will stop it from actually destroying the details because we don't want to destroy our details. So we can change our uh, brushes up here. We can come through. Uh, there are some really good blending brushes. I want to find the, uh, the right blend brush. Okay, basic blender. Uh, in Crydo, it's not a blur, it's not a smudge tool, sorry. It's a blend tool. So you can come down, select that blend tool there. You can come down to your image and then you can just push to get your colors to come in and push to get your colors out and drag along and just gently blend your colors. Yeah. So you follow the outside line and what you're doing is you're sort of just pushing that down using the blend tool, lightening it off so it's not as strong on the corner. See that there? I've got major uh, hand tremors and a, a broken arm, which I uh, point out multiple times. So getting straight lines is not easy for me anymore. Um, and that can't be fixed, unfortunately. It's in such a position, it's uh, trapped all the nerves. So um, you'll be able to do a lot better than what I'm actually doing here. And this is why I show the AI tools. And um, I mentioned, if you don't know about that, go back and uh, look at my previous video on the Kryta with the AI Diffusion plugin. And the little tricks that I uh, teach and show how you can use it to um, to blend um, a AI image onto your uh, black and white to create um, that color photo. And it uses, I use very similar um, techniques to this. I'll um, generate an image that looks close, if not identical to the original. And then even with that, I will use the uh, the blend to come through and actually um, make that layer work with the existing black and white layer so you get um, more of the original image coming through so you get things like the moles and the freckles and we don't lose them. So we can see there. That's it. Don't use a normal layer. You can still play with the opacities to um, get to where you want. But go through and play with your different uh, blend types for your layer. And you can get some really interesting effects that way. So lighten looks pretty good on it as well. Uh, keep in mind, some of the blend layers will actually affect the, um, the black. They can do a bit of an inversion. This one here works great with color. This one here works great with color with the opacity down. And you can see... We're getting all those hairs, all those details coming through. We're not losing any of that image. 
So there it is, quick and easy on how to um, go through and do your layers properly and recolor a black and white photo like a professional using Kriter. And Kriter is absolutely fantastic. It is as powerful as Adobe and as Photoshop, but some of the wording is a little bit different. Um, it's more professional wording than uh, the basic wording that you're used to understanding. So there is that learning curve to uh, transition over to it. But hopefully you liked this video. And if you did, like, subscribe and get the bell on. Remember, Crider is absolutely free. It's open source. You can run it on your computer. You can run it on an Android device. And I believe it's available in the iOS store as well on Apple, uh, which means that gives you the ability to go through and use your phone to recolor a photo with the exact same options, the exact same layers, uh, which is, uh, in my opinion, it's absolutely fantastic. So like, subscribe, get the bell on, leave a comment below, and it's quick, it's easy, just like that. And I will see you in the next Stream Tabulous video. Thank you for watching my video and sticking around to the end. If you like my videos, it'd really help me out if you could like and subscribe. It helps the YouTube algorithm to push my videos out there to more viewers, which in turn helps me and helps everyone. So thank you for watching my video and hanging around to the end, and I will see you in the next video.